And we, didn't, we didn't mess up that time, so <laughs> I don't know why. We, we were due. <laughs> <laughs> we were overdue. Yeah. Um, but but uh, again, it, I'm sorry, it doesn't reflect well on us that uh, you have to make two trips to the building. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to ask some, some questions. Uh, other people are going to jump in as they feel they want to. And then, of course, before you leave the room, you get to tell us anything you want to that we didn't ask about. So if you have a great answer to a question that just never comes up, hold on to that and give it to us then. <laughs> okay. Uh, if there's anything of a personal, uh, confidential nature about the race that you think we should know, um, I want to remind you that this conversation is being recorded. So I, I'd suggest maybe you pull Jennifer aside afterward and let her know that information. Okay. And because the conversation is recorded, you should know that all or parts of it, probably all of it, will appear on the Times Leader's website at some point. So just so you're familiar with that. Um, because we didn't visit with you in the spring, because this is, a, this is our first conversation, we had asked a lot of biographical questions of people, candidates, uh, in the spring. And uh, I don't want to ignore that, but I don't want to uh, spend too much time on it. If you could just tell us a little bit uh, about yourself, uh, your educational background and what you're doing today? Uh, well, I'm 52 years old. I'm from Kingston Township. I'm local talent. I was born and raised here. Uh, went to local elementary school in Kingston, uh, Wyoming Valley West High School when it was still in Kingston. Um, when I got out of high school, I uh, worked at various jobs, including probably 15 years as a truck driver. Went to college, the local community college, graduated, got a nursing degree about uh, 17 years ago now. And I've been uh, working at HCR Manor Care. Uh, that's in uh, Hanover Township, the Hampton House. Uh, I enlisted in the Army Reserves when I was in my 20s. Did 23 years in the Army Reserves, including uh, uh, two tours uh, in Iraq. Uh, just recently retiring in 2008. Uh, presently still working as a registered nurse at the Hampton House. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank you for your service as well. Thank you. Um, when did you decide that you wanted to be part of this race? Was it take us through the thought process uh, and did you, did you talk with other people about the decision before you made it? I, I don't think I really talked with anybody. I, I did run for state rep last year in the 120th district in a three-way race. And, uh, you know, the motiv motivating factor there to get me out, it, it's about leadership. I mean, I just don't see anybody willing to lead to tell the people the truth that, you know, the trouble that we're in in this, you know, from the county right on up, uh, you know, to the federal government. and. Uh, you know, back at that race, I said, well, if nobody else wants to lead, I'll, I'll do it myself. And, uh, you know, after it, it was a long probably a year I put in dedicated to that race, I knocked on over 12,000 doors. But uh, I sat home for about a month or two. And uh, once again, I, I watched the, ra you know, listened to the radio, watched the uh, TV, read the papers, and it just... Uh, it gets to me, my blood pressure raises, I couldn't sit still. And uh, when I, uh, I realized that this county race, uh, this county certainly needs some leadership, and uh, um, I said, uh, if nobody else will do it, I'll do it. You had the extra hurdle of collecting signatures, right? Because of, as an independent candidate, you had to meet a certain threshold? That's correct. Yeah, it was 995, I believe, to be exact. But I never had a problem with signatures. I'm a hard worker, and I probably turned in more than anybody. I end up turning in something like 2,200 signatures. Uh, did you consult with anybody? You know, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? Or is it a personal decision on your part? Uh, no, it's pretty much personal. My wife... Uh, She'll give me a little backing, but she knows my decisions, my decision. She knows what, what it's like to go through, you know, giving up a lot. Of, in fact, it's all of your extra time when you're not working. Mm -hmm. uh, I did talk to our uh, state chairman, Lou Jasikoff. Uh, uh, you might have heard of him, but uh, you know, we talk about a little bit of strategy, basically. But, uh, of course, when you, if you know Lou, he'll... He'll, sort, he'll push you toward it no matter what. <laughs> so <laughs> I knew what to expect there, but uh, it was mostly my decision. Okay. 
Now, with all your focus uh, in the fall on that on that state rep race, what have you done since then to try to focus on getting familiar with county government operations as they are now the home rule charter? Uh, well, I've I've read the charter online. I've I tried to get to a few, I have attended a few transition meetings, but because of my work schedule, I work evenings, uh, you know, it, it's very hard for me to do so. Uh, just, you know, I have tried to read the minutes when I haven't been able to attend, but uh, I, I don't know if you're aware, I know your paper ran a story uh, uh, last year about Walter Griffith endorsing me, and uh, I have kept in touch with Walter, and he's a good source of information over there, and uh, you know he sort of gives me uh, a, a little guidance. Uh, the information you do have on the transition committee, do you have a sense of whether it's on pace with the many responsibilities it has before January, or well, any concerns about the transition at this point? I think they're doing a real good job from what I've seen. I mean, I certainly wouldn't want to be on that committee, but you know, with with transitioning and all, and and certainly when I, hopefully, if I do get on this council, it's going to be a job. It's certainly not going to be a part-time job, but uh, uh, from what I read and understand, I think they're. They're on track anyway. I, I don't wouldn't say they're ahead, but you know, I have confidence in, in most of the people on that committee what they're doing. And if elected to serve on this council, how much time do you expect you would dedicate to the post? Well, as much as I need. In fact, I said uh, you know I, I do work full time currently, but uh, uh, if in any way I'm going to shortchange the the citizens of this county, I will go down to part-time at my job, and I, I don't have a problem with that. So, uh, you know, it, it could be a full-time job, and if, if that's what it demands, then that's what I'll do. Do you feel that it's appropriate for those council members to have a daily presence in the courthouse, or do you think you'd come up with another plan for making yourself accessible to the public if they need to reach you? Oh, I, I think asking that's asking too much, especially people that are working full-time jobs to be present every day in that courthouse, but the, certainly they should be accessible. I mean, if you look on my cards, that's my home phone number there. Uh, uh, I don't have a problem with anybody calling me, and that includes any citizen of this county, and they can call me at home. Uh, were you... Uh, supportive of the Home Rule Charter? Did you think it was a good document or did you have concerns with it? Uh, in the end, I mean, there was good and bad. In the end, I voted against it, uh, probably, and it might sound a little crazy, but it, it, a lot of it had to do with constitutional concerns, like the inability to uh, not elect a sheriff who should be the law of the land in this county, but however, is often uh, used more as like a lackey uh, of the court. Um, some other things I worried about were uh, unequal representation. You, you might get all Democrats in there. You might get all Republicans. Uh, uh, certainly, there were uh, many good things about the charter, but in the end, I voted against it. Uh, my feeling is is that uh, you know, it, it's not the form of government. It's the people you elect to government that makes the difference. Uh, Given those concerns, if you're elected to the council, would you want to address some of those issues right away, or do you think those are things that wait and see what happens before you act on? Well, there there are some flaws I see in it that probably need to be addressed, uh, and I've written to both your papers, and you know, I'm not just somebody that uses sound bites like on the back of my card there that say you know no no more taxes, no more borrowing. You know, I I say I I don't just. Uh, talk the talk, I walk the walk. You know, one thing I, I think as legislators, we can legislate into the administrative code the ability to restore some of the powers back to uh, the controller that he's losing under this charter because he's not going to be able to see these purchases and whatnot till, till after they're paid. And uh, it, it can be done without violating the covenants of the charter. That's, that's one thing off the top of my head. Uh, if elected and you're serving on the council, would you vote to approve the hiring of any relative to a county authority board or commission? Absolutely not. Uh, do you feel it would be an issue? Do you have someone in your family who... Absolutely not. My family is all gainfully employed outside of county uh, business. Uh, 
I have very few relatives here, and I just joke around, but I tell them I have no friends either. So, so, so. Beholden to no one, then. <laughs> it, that, that, exactly. You can, that's, you can quote me on that one. Uh, do you have an area of expertise that you would bring to the council? Do you feel that you're particularly skilled in numbers or budgeting? Do you have a legal background, a love of research? Well, negotiation, something that I didn't mention. There. Well, there, there's a lot of street smarts here, and a lot of I've been very active, you know, financially my whole life. I did go to King's College for a few semesters way back, but uh, you know, I've learned through the school of hard knocks about saving and investing, and I've done quite well. Uh, uh, I'm very uh, disciplined when it comes to finances. I would certainly run this county like I run my own house. Uh, a lot of it's just uh, common sense, the ability to stand up, say, uh, you know, we're all going to have to sacrifice here. Uh, you know, there's probably going to be some cuts in services, and, uh, you know, there's, there's probably going to, there might even have to be, you know, some layoffs. I'd rather do layoffs. Uh, through attrition rather than layoffs, but you know, we need to get this financial house in order here, and, and I'm the one to tell you that you know we're going to ha everybody's going to have to sacrifice, whether it's you know the workers or with their pay and whatnot, and uh, you know the citizens of this county with the services they might lose. But you know I'm going to tell it like it is. That's why I, it's like I said about leadership. No one else will tell you. I'm the one that'll tell you. Those uh, courses or the time you spent at King's College, were you pursuing a particular degree at that time? It was finance, uh, and that was probably back in the 80s, but uh, I was young and uh, it just really, I, I was interested in finance, but it was some of the classes besides that that uh, turned me off, like calculus and all that, and I just basically, I finished two semesters and quit. Then you became a nurse after that? Yeah, I, I went back. I think I drove truck a few more years and realized that, that I was at a dead end. And uh, I think I was 34 years old when I finally went back to the community college. I did have a question. You said earlier some of the candidates that we've talked to who are retired said that they could give it a lot of time because they're retired. But you have a full time job, nursing job, but you also said you would be able to give that up absolutely you know, time, this I, is only a eight thousand dollar a year position. absolutely well I told you I've been in finance I've done very well if you guys know anything about the gold market silver market I've invested heavily the last few year, few years uh, I'm a believer in the sound currency uh, uh, gold backed currency uh, so uh, uh, I I'm in a I'm I didn't mean to imply that people would expect any of the council people to. Right. Do that. You're the only person that we talked to. Oh, uh, I might be able to do that. Uh, so to tell you know, to put it bluntly, I'm looking for an excuse to either <laughs> cut down or get out of the profession. I think there's something else in life, and maybe this is the course. And uh, you know, I, through the military, I do have medical coverage up to VA, so it wouldn't be a problem for me to. Uh, Go down to part time day here or day there. I would still work nursing, but probably on the weekends then and make myself more available during the week to be here. Uh, what, could you point to a strong uh, attribute you have, not, not, not necessarily a skill, but, but something that you feel that you'd be able to bring to this council? Well, I, I think I mentioned, mentioned leadership, the fact that I you know, wouldn't be. Uh, pushed, shoved around, I, I would tell it like it is. Uh, that, that's probably one skill. I mean, that's something I probably learned in the Army. Uh, another thing I, we talked about, I'm not beholden to anybody. There's no special interests behind me. Uh, no unions, lawyers, corporations give me any money. It's 95% uh, of its close friends and, and family that, that have uh, given me money. Do you, um, what was your rank in the, in the Army when you left? Uh, Sergeant First Class. Okay, so you had moved up the ranks somewhat and had some leadership there. Yeah, in fact, uh, when I retired, uh, my last tour in Iraq, I was a convoy commander over there. Is that what, what we, I should ask, what were you doing there? Were you tr driving truck or being a nurse? Or? No, I, I wasn't in the medical profession there. I was actually in the quartermasters my whole uh, 
military career, but uh, uh, believe it or not, I was a, a cook and, and in supply most of my career, but uh, you know, when you're over there, things change, so I end up uh, volunteering. I became an operations NCO and a convoy commander, so we were running convoys from uh, the Turkish border down through almost Baghdad. Uh, back to your, your, your talk about the supporters were from close friends and family. How much do you expect to raise and spend on this campaign? Uh, well, I mean, to date, I think we're up near $1,500. I mean, if we can get, I think that was the easy money, you know, the people I knew I can count on. So we might get 2000 2500 Total? Yes. How would you describe yourself uh, politically? Have you always been a member of the Libertarian Party? Or? I think I've always had libertarian leanings. I've, I haven't been a card-carrying member now for only five years, but certainly what applies with the Libertarian Party, I mean, no matter what you heard about us and, and what we think about national issues, we are by far the most fiscally conservative party, and that is what this county sorely needs is some fiscal discipline. Uh, on the subject of uh, the county and, and its budget, um, do you have specific suggestions for areas where you think money can be saved? Or on the flip side, how, how revenues might be able to be increased by things they haven't tapped into at this point? Well, uh, again, I, I'm probably one of the only candidates that uh, outlined anything specific in the papers, uh, in the editorials. Uh, one thing is, uh, now I mentioned about you know, giving the controller back some of his power, which hopefully would save some money, but uh, I also mentioned about uh, rotating auditors uh, every two years so that the auditors and the audited don't develop a cozy relationship. Uh, although we don't control hiring and firing in the council uh, with the judicial uh, branch, uh, uh, we do uh, approve their budget. And from what I understand, we're probably about 20% overstaffed, at, at least compared to similar sized counties. And I know there's been talk about consolidating TIP staffs and whatnot. Um, you have to give the court a budget that, that the people can live with. Not with the, when they don't dictate, it's the people. And, and uh, let them decide whether to buy paper clips or personnel with that money. But uh, that's like a, an area that uh, seems to be taboo, but uh, I think there's big savings there. Uh, some people would say, though, isn't the danger of, of squeezing the courts um, that then they try to streamline, they find ways to do things faster, and maybe that's some of what contributed to our issues, uh, public corruption-wise, in the last Well, that, that's no excuse for becoming corrupt. Uh, if they want to streamline, maybe you want to get a DA in there that's maybe not going to jail uh, nonviolent offenders, for example. I mean, there's got to be ways. You just can't keep stuffing your prisons full of people. So, uh, I mean, maybe that's uh, one thing that needs to be looked at here. Because I understand the prison, the prison is, uh, th that's one of your larger budget items. Uh, what do you feel is the county's responsibility in funding outside organizations, things such as public libraries? Well, um, that, that's a tough one, but I think that should be done at the local level. Uh, I don't see how the, you know, the county can be responsible for, for uh, you know, every little town's library. I mean, uh, uh, there's numerous libraries around. I get a donation letter from the Wyoming Library every uh, every year. I think that's how it should be done. That's how it should be remain. I mean, hopefully it can be done through private funding rather than uh, public funding. Uh, but uh, I, I don't think I would agree with the county having to support uh, you know libraries throughout the county. And on a re related issue, what about uh, things such as Moon Lake Park or the recreational facilities that the county has traditionally operated? Do you think there's a role for that? I, I do. And, and, you know, I, I am a believer in small government, but I'm also an environmentalist. Now, I think Moon Lake is a gem as long as it's not a burden to the taxpayers. You know, if you have to, I don't have any problems with user fees if you need to charge an admission, whatever you need to do to break even there. 
Uh, certainly we shouldn't be drilling under it or around it. I don't agree with that. Um, but uh, as long as it can at least break even, you know, I mean, the alternative, you hate to say it, well, yeah, you can make some money by selling it, but, you know, well, what are you going to have there? You, it's a one-time thing, and you're going to end up with a housing development out there. So, you know, I, I think we should keep something like a Moon Lake Park, but only if it's not a burden to the taxpayers. I think that's the issue, though, and I'm not intimately familiar with its budget, but those people who are tell us that you're not going to break even up on that, that it is consistently going to cost more than it brings in. So in that situation, do we cut our losses at some point, or do we think this is providing a service to the public, so we'll continue to keep Well, it? then in that case, that's a tough one. I mean, if you can find savings somewhere else to offset that, I would love the county to keep it. But unfortunately, if it is a burden, and it's drawing us deeper into the hole, then you might have to, at that point, look at hopefully not selling it off, but turn it over to a private entity. I mean, is there a way to work with the Sierra Club, the Boy Scouts, to uh, volunteers, get volunteers out there? To, I mean, there's. I would certainly exhaust everything possible before I would want to sell that off, at least Moon Lake Park now. Now, some of these other buildings, you, you know, like the Valley Crest thing, I mean, sometimes you just got to take your losses, sell it, and get out of it. I mean, uh, otherwise you're going to end up with another uh, Sterling-type fiasco there. Um, now that you mention that, it reminds me, what about the Market Street Square property, which they've talked for a long time about the Visitor Center? Um, do you have thoughts on that one? Well, you know, I, I'm a big history buff, and... Uh, you know, I would hate to see that go, but, you know, unfortunately, you know, if it can't be sold to a private entity that, that would fix it up, uh, it's a whole other story, that, that whole downtown Wilkes-Barre thing, if it was done right, they could have modeled after Europe and had trains coming in there, but, uh, you know, that's a whole other story, but, I mean, the longer it sits, the more likely it's going to end up like the Hotel Sterling. It needs to be sold off probably and quickly to somebody that hopefully would, uh, you know, preserve it and, and make use of it. But to just hold on to it and let, let it sit empty, that, that's, that's unacceptable. Uh, a question about uh, the courthouse and the, and the staff there. What do you feel is a reasonable fringe benefit package for county employees, or a reasonable number of sick days or vacation days? Well, I mean, you have to, I would say, is you have to keep it in line with what's happening in the private sector, because the private sector is the one of the people working and, and paying uh, for our county government. Uh, I mentioned about sacrifice. We all have to sacrifice equal. I don't want people's jobs or benefits, but uh, you know, if one's becoming out of balance, we need to keep it in line with uh, with the private sector. For example, now I'm going on three years with less than a one percent raise. So certainly, I, I think I'm probably about average for the private sector. I know some that have taken cuts. I know some that have gotten a little more than that, but certainly not much more. Uh, we need to keep uh, county wages in, in line with the private sector. Their benefits, uh, in some cases, have been much better than the private sector. There probably needs to be some sacrifice there. I mean, my medical alone has gone up uh, in uh, four years, it's uh, quadrupled. It's gone from um, sixty dollars a month to to three hundred a month. So, I mean, we we all need to work together on this. And uh, you know, I, I have said before, I'm a taxpayer advocate, and uh, you know, I am fighting. I, I talk to the people every day that are on the verge of losing their homes, and they're the ones I'm fighting for. If elected to serve on this body, um, you're going to make decisions that are unpopular, no matter what you decide. On the issue of Moon Lake Park, for instance, right. there will be some people who say, yeah, we should get rid of that albatross, and other people are going to say, how can you get rid of that natural gem? 
Uh, what's your approach to making those kind of decisions that are going to displease someone no matter uh, which option is chosen? Have you been in that position before and are you prepared to handle the reaction to it? Well, I mean, over the course of my life I've been in that position, not, not in politics, of course. But uh, I would say that uh, I, I do come here with a set of principles and uh, I won't uh, stray from that set of principles. I'm not going to raise taxes. I'm not going to approve of any more borrowing. That, that's period. That's just not going to happen. Now, we might negotiate on how much we're going to cut. I'm sure I'm probably going to want to cut a lot more than most, but I'll be willing to meet people halfway or, or three quarters of the way. But, but I'm not going to sacrifice those principles. You, you, you meet people part of the way, how about regarding raising taxes or borrowing? You said you're not going to do that. Okay, well, if they're talking about raising taxes, then yeah, you can call me uh, you can call me a no, because I'm not going to, we'll, so we'll find ways. Because you said you'd meet people halfway, but well, no on these other things. Okay. I just want to be. I'm yeah, if that. we're going to cut, say I want to cut $10, and, and, and the other side wants to cut $2, I'll, I might go to $3. You know, but when it comes to raising taxes or increasing borrowing, that's always going to be a no. Uh, if elected, will you bring a particular issue to the council for consideration? Is there something you feel passionate about, whether it be um, natural gas issues or, or uh, taxation issues? Or do you feel that the council manager is the person he or she will bring the issues to council and, and you'll vote on those? Well, I think we need as a group to guide the, the manager as to what direction we want to go. I mean, he's, it's sort of like in the military. We're going to be the officer to give him the orders to the sergeant, it's going to be up to him to figure out how to do it. He's going to be the expert. Uh, I, I would guide him toward, uh, you know, fiscal discipline. One, one of the biggest, I think the time bomb here is, uh, you know, this debt overhang is we've got record low interest rates. What's going to happen when we have to refinance or borrow more? Interest rates have nowhere to go but up from here. I, th I don't quote me, but I think they, somebody said 21% of our budget now is going to pay just for interest. I could be wrong with that number, but uh, certainly there's a big chance and likelihood that percentage, if we don't get this under control quick, that percentage is going to go much higher. Uh, if elected to the council, would you be interested in serving as uh, its chair chairperson, or if not, what? What uh, attributes would you be looking for in a chair? Uh, well, if I would be fortunate enough to, you know, get the votes to be the chair, I would certainly, uh, you know, take that position. Uh, again, uh, attributes in a chair would be somebody like myself, just, uh, you know, somebody able to lead, not be afraid of what to say regardless of who it's going to hurt. Uh, we talked a little bit about your uh, campaigning. You said you might spend up to 2500 potentially. Um, what are you doing? To, uh, tell us what activities you're involved in to get your name out there, and to get your message out there. Well, I've always been a hard worker, I'm sure. And I'm not just saying this. I've, been, I've probably been working harder than anybody at this campaign. Number one, I had to start back in March to start getting uh, my signatures. So, you know, I've been going to every uh, festival, bazaar, chicken dinner. Uh, it's amazing. I'm not, you know, <laughs> a little bit heavier than I am now. But uh, uh, those cards you see there, I've passed out over 7,000 so far. And that's not just passing them out. That's going up to, my, to people, introducing myself, shaking their hand and letting them know what I'm about. So it's largely a lot of grassroots. Uh, now I'm in the process of contacting my old supporters in, in the 120th race and, and asking them for help, whether it's just letting me put a sign on their property, uh, uh, s stuff like that. And we're going to have a fundraiser next week and hopefully you know, it'll be well attended. 
Um, but it, it, it's a lot of grassroots phone calls. Uh, I've been writing to all three major papers in this county every month as often as they'll let me now for five months now. And like I said, not just sound bites, but you know, solutions. What do the 7,000 people, that's a lot of hands to shake, what do, what do people tell you? Well, a lot of them, they're disgusted. Now the thing is, is are they gonna come out and vote? Some, most of them are so disgusted I mean, they say they agree with me, but, you know, are they going to come out and vote? I, I don't know. I think I had that problem last year when I ran. It seems the people very attracted to me, usually you can be described as, uh, you know, working class poor, you know, barely scraping by working couples with the new economy. Maybe they're both making $12 an hour. I see a lot of resentment to the system we have that grants benefits to those that don't work. Very, a lot of anger there and resentment. Uh, very angry at the situation here with the corruption here. Most say you'll never clean that place out over there. I said, well, I don't care. You know, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try, so. But, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of acceptance of a third party, I think, because they're realizing that, you know, these other, two, the major parties are owned, whether it's uh, unions, lawyers, corporations, you know, there's somebody controlling these other two parties. And they understand that they don't have their, you know, these politicians, most of them don't have their best interests at heart. They're dancing to the tune of wherever the money's coming from, or the influence. If elected and you're serving as part of that group, but you were from a, a third party, what about, do you feel that there might be that frustration that grows when you're not among the major decision makers necessarily? Yeah, there might be, but at the very least I'll be a, a set of eyes and ears, a, a check and balance on what these other parties or, you know, even the independents that might get on what, to what they're doing. And uh, what's your relationship with, then with uh, Charles Hatchko in terms of the campaign? And Charlie and I, we just helped each other get some signatures because we knew it, we had uh, quite a load. So I took some of his sheets, he took some of mine. But other than that, we're completely two different people. I mean, you can, you know, you, I'm sure you know Charlie, and he's, he can be, a, you know, I, I wouldn't say over the top with what he believes in, but uh, he probably agree with me. And uh, you know me, with my libertarian, I certainly separate my uh, religion and politics. Any questions from the group at this point? I uh, wanted to ask, are you satisfied with this endorsement interview that you've been asked the appropriate questions and had a chance to make your points? Oh, I think so. I, I don't think you skipped anything. I don't think there's anything I'm bursting out to say that I haven't said here, so. <laughs> anything, uh, anything you want to emphasize or anything we didn't ask about at all? No, not really. I mean, uh, yeah, I think you pretty much covered it all and uh, you know, I thank you for your questions. We appreciate you being here today to have a conversation. Thank you very much.